I'm going to contrast two different approaches to process optimization that are available in Jump. I'm going to look at maximize desirability and also at simulation experiment and show that under certain circumstances they can lead to different solutions. Now when we're trying to optimize a process like this, we're trying to find the best settings for the, the factors or inputs that will give us the most desirable value for our um, output or response. And if that response was something like yield, we'd be trying to maximize it. If it was something like an impurity level, we'd be trying to minimize it. Or it could be some other critical characteristic that, that, that we want to hit a target, a specific target value. In order to be able to optimize the process, the first thing that we have to do is find a model or a relationship that links the, the factors or inputs to the, the critical output. And the way that uh, people often build models or, or find a good model to represent their process or system is by, by running a designed experiment. So let me open up this 13 run definitive screening design. And this is a three level design and this will actually allow me to build a response surface model where I have interaction terms and, and quadratic terms. There are many ways that you can build models and jump and that's a whole topic in its own right. So I'm not going to dwell uh, too long on this. I'm just going to use um, the built-in screening script here to, to build a model. Um, so let me run that script. This this has automatically generated the script when you create the definitive screening design. And you can see the platforms already highlighted three linear or main effects, a quadratic term for time with time and a two-factor interaction between temperature and modifier. And let me go ahead and make that model. And you can see the three linear or, or main effects, the quadratic term for time and the two-factor interaction. And let me build that model. So let, let me click on run. And we can see here that uh, the R squared adjusted is telling me that my model is explaining about 99.9% .9 of the variation. So it appears to be uh, a model that's explaining a lot of the variation. We could spend a lot more time looking at this model to see how well it fits the data or looking for an alternative model that's perhaps better. But let's assume now that we've found a model that we believe is explaining the relationship between the, the our factors, our, our inputs and the response in, in a reasonably good way and that we're happy with this model. And we now want to use this model to optimize our process. So let's move down to the prediction profile at the bottom. You can see all of these terms, by the way, are uh, highly significant. Uh, and I'm also going to turn off the desirability functions for the moment and make this a bit bigger. The prediction profiler allows us to see the model um, in an interactive way. We can see the quadratic term for time and that there's a maxima here uh, in the critical output characteristic for a particular value of time. We can also see the two-factor interaction between temperature and modifier. As I go to low values of temperature, uh, the gradient of the modifier graph gets steep. As I go to higher values of temperature, the modifier graph flattens out. So changes in modifier would translate through to very small changes in the, in the critical output characteristic. Now let me just return the factor settings to the, the midpoints. And let me turn on the Monte Carlo simulator. And the Monte Carlo simulator allows us to explore the impact of variations in these input factors because in reality, although once we identify what the best settings are for these factors, we, we're likely to have some natural variation in those, those settings so that in fact over time they will drift slightly uh, and we want the optimization to be able to take that account of that if possible. So let me introduce some random variation in these input factors and also let me add in the unexplained variation that the model doesn't account for so that we don't underestimate how much variation we're going to have. So now when I click on simulate, what's going to happen is Jump's going to randomly pick values from these input distributions and then calculate the value of the critical output characteristic using the model that we've got uh, lying behind this profiler. It, by default, it's going to do that 5,000 times. So I click on simulate. And you can see that the failure rate is about 50%. About half of the distribution is, is falling below the lower spec limit. Half of the, the output is, is out of spec or, or below that lower spec limit. Let me just change that to a percentage. And let me remember those, those initial settings. Just call this initial. 
Okay, so let's look at the first optimization technique, which is maximize desirability. And it's going to search the factor space here and find settings that, that give us the highest possible value for the critical output characteristic. So if I go ahead and maximize desirability, you can see that these settings have changed now. And if we simulate at the new um, settings, you can see that the failure rate has now dropped to about 5% and we've now got a much higher value for this critical output characteristic. So let me uh, remember those settings and I'll call this max desirability. Okay, so now let's look at the simulation experiment as an alternative way to find the, the optimum settings. So this is going to explore the three factors, the factor space, but this time instead of trying to find the, the settings that give the highest possible value for the critical output characteristic, it's going to try and find input settings that give us the, the lowest value for the, the defect rate or the, the number of out of spec points. So let me run the simulation experiment. By default, it's going to do 128 different experiments or trials. It's going to use a space filling design to explore the factor space. And I'm going to get it to explore the full range of the factor, uh, factor space. And let me click OK. And what it's done at, at each of those these process uh, factor settings, each row it represents 5,000 Monte Carlo simulations at, at three different settings for these, these factors and we've got 128 different runs. Now there is a, a built-in script that allows me to analyze this, but before we analyze it, let me just let you see what this looks like visually. If I scroll along to the end, you can see that we've got, for each of the, the 128 different factor settings, we've got the critical output characteristic, mean, and also the, the defect rate. So let's just quickly visualize this. If I do graph scatterplot 3D, and we look at the, the three factor settings. Uh, and let me make the settings a bit bigger here. You can see that, that it's explored the, the factor space using this space filling design. If I do rows, color or mark by column and select the overall defect rate, you can see that the blue, the lowest defect rates are in one corner of that, uh, that factor space. We could also look at this with Graph Builder. So let me go into Graph Builder and plot time against temperature. And let's put modifier as a grouping variable. And it's defaulted to five levels. Let me reduce that to three. And let me replace the points uh, with a contour. And let me color by the log 10 defect rate. In fact, let me just use the overall defect rate. And let me remove the smoother. And so we've got another representation of the uh, defect rate in the, our factor space. And we can see that the lowest defect rates, if I get the crosshairs, are kind of up in this top right hand corner of the factor space. OK, so what the Gaussian process, the built in script is going to do, it's going to model the log 10 defect rate because that's a better thing to model. So let me go ahead and, and run that script. And this takes a few seconds to run uh, to build a model for the log 10 defect rate. And the first thing it's, it's telling me here is how well the model's fitting the log 10 defect rate. So it seems to be doing a pretty good job. And you can see that we get now get another profiler. And let me just minimize the table and put this second profiler to the, to the right hand side. And this is a profiler for the log 10 defect rate now, rather than the critical output characteristic. But I can actually link the profilers. So if I go in here and make sure these two profilers are linked, then when I go ahead and maximize desirability for the log 10 defect rate, what it'll do is it'll find settings uh, for the factors that minimize this defect rate or the number of points out of spec below that lower spec limit. And because the profilers are linked, these factor settings are now the same as they were on the log 10 defect rate profiler. So let's simulate now at those new settings. And you can see now that the distribution is much tighter and the defect rates drop to between 1, 1.5%. One so let me just remember those settings now. And this was simulation experiment. Click OK. 
let me just try and get all of this on the screen at the one time. I'm going to shrink this a little bit just to make sure it fits the screen. So, and let me just turn on automatic histogram update. So if I go back to the initial settings, you can see that we had about 50% of uh, the distribution out of spec below that lower spec limit. Maximized desirability took the critical output from 75 up to 81, uh, nearly 82, and the defect rate went down to 5.2%. But simulation experiment actually didn't achieve quite as high a value for the critical output characteristic as it's dropped to 79 here, but it's found a better place to operate that has reduced this defect rate to 1.5%. And if I toggle between maximize desirability and simulation experiment, then the thing that's different is that it's using a higher value for the modifier. And so if I slowly increase the modifier here, you can see that the output distribution is tightening and also the, the gradient for temperature is becoming flatter. And so really what um, simulation experiment has done is it's exploited the two-factor interaction between temperature and modifier to reduce the, the, the variation in the critical output characteristic. I've got a little uh, graphic that kind of describes the, the difference here. So maximized desirability has, has explored the factor space to find the highest possible value uh, for the, the critical output characteristic. But simulation experiment has taken account of the variation that we have in the input variables. It's found a more robust place to operate the process that will give us a, a good distribution for our critical output characteristic, but that takes account of that variation we have in the critical input characteristic. Now I should emphasize that this is a prediction from a model, so we would need to go and, and verify or confirm that we could actually achieve this, this improvement that we're seeing here.